Welcome to Florence Trap and Supplies and for short videos, instructional videos I hope. Hope you get something out of them. Um, as you can see obviously this, these are on beaver. Um, I've got a day's catch sitting here. Not by any stretches at my best, nor by any stretches at my worst. But uh, don't get wrapped up in the numbers game. All right. Uh, we're going to try and do a post set, a caster set, set a house up, and maybe a crossover. Try and get as much information to you as possible, and uh, let's go do it. Uh, what this is, is an old dam, a very old dam, but they're still working on it. They got fresh mud they just put up right there, there, and there's some over there, and there's tracks. There's a old house that I trapped out last year, out here, and then there's a big feeding area that got flooded back here. Now there's a couple of think there's a new pair moving in on that house, but I don't want to set it up uh, the doorways or stuff like that because of the, the otter season is closed here. So I can the crossover on this dam is right over there, and there's one over there actually, and I'll show you that one later because we're going to make a cash mount here, and I'm going to show you how to make my stick set over there for curiosity. All right. All I want to do is the caster mount set isn't hard by any stretch. I've already staked my traps out. I use a, I'll uh, explain my traps situation in another short video on what I use and how I got them set up. But just the basics is I want this to look definitely all shiny like that. I grabbed this stick from the dam. I can put a stick on that side because it's kind of floating. Put a stick on this side keep it from floating into my set. I can take a little stick push it out like that kind of make them come in. Hopefully even if they come across there hopefully it's enough to make them come straight out this way. On some of my sets, you've seen me use one trap. There's nothing wrong with using one trap. My preferred method is to use two. Too many times I've had one get fouled up. And this was a little paddle to get back in here. Again, my night latch just clicked. Set the chain over to the edge. Now I like to set one back farther for hopefully a left rear foot. Okay. Got that dead center. Get this without my hand being caught in there. That's the center of that trap, right there. So if that beaver come in here, it's about four inches offset to the center of my pan. I'll take this trap. Night latch. By the way, I will say this, at these Sleepy Creek four and a half are the beaver machine. I love these double long springs. I can get them set. They don't rock. <clears throat> now, this is the center of my other one. See? Just like that. Boom, boom. I got a couple of sticks to help push them out around the edge.
Another thing I like to do is, as I know it's not supposed to rain, but if it does, bark, right like that. See what that curved piece of bark? Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to take my caster lure, which happens to be Blackie's backbreaker. And you see, I'm not stingy on this, all right? Put it right in there, just like that. And I can take that and turn that upside down. And now i got a rain proof lure container right there. Now, I'm going to take a little more gob, and I'm going to put it up in the air like that on a stick. Now, if that stick's knocked over, and, and sometimes the coon do it, I know somehow they work that set, and they've knocked down that stick. And then I'll have to do some different changing around here. But basically, it's simple. Don't be afraid, you're not over trapped, okay? There's a lot of times, not a lot of times, but I can tell you for a guarantee, last year three times I had three doubles by putting two traps, okay? It just puts the odds in your favor and whenever I take the odds in my favor, I'm happy. All right, let's get on to the next set. I just wanted to show this caster mount set from the water side. Those two sticks are the middle of the pan. Okay. See how they're offset? Got your caster mount up there. There you go. All right. Well, we've got our beaver dispatched. Took the foot off, foot hold off, got it ready to go. He's got quite a mess here. These Sleepy Creek's got a little bit of a channel in the pan, and if I blow like that, it blows the water out. Hear my night latch go off? That means it's basically like a hair trigger on a rifle. No. I'll set that there. I'm gonna make my bed. I want that about that deep. Now he's got this all tore up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this trap right down here. Oh side of the banks here. I think I can get by with about right here. It's not an exact science. use this stick to tell me about the center of the trap and I'm on that side of the trap so my beaver is got to walk up this way because he's got wide feet okay now we'll put some of this brush in over here we're gonna make kind of a, a little bit of a corral all right we're gonna kind of force them in, out and in. And we can leave that up there, make it look like it's a little harder to get by on that side. It ain't gonna necessarily stop all of them from climbing up there and going down again. That's what caster mounds, I'm not I do set them, but I'm not exactly the big favorite of them. Now that branch, I can help kind of block all of this off. Okay. I'm 
make it just a little bit. So this seems to be the easiest way in for them. Now I want to smear this nice and flat. Put a little water on it. Smear that right up. Nice and flat. That'll make a shine. Okay. Usually I do it before, but I know where my trap is. And I'm going out farther out. And I'm slapping that mud up there. Or I come over here and slap that mud up there. Now we already caught a beaver here yesterday too. And to begin with, this was a natural. A beaver had made a caster mound here. I think it was up there though. So there that says you got it fenced down. My trap pan's right here. My beaver's about right like that. Hopefully he comes in like that. Of course I want to take my stick out. Push it in over there. And I'll come out. I should have my walking stick. But that's okay. Sometimes you forget. Now that beaver's got this whole area smelled up. That's okay too, that's good. Now, I'm gonna take this caster lure. I'm gonna put some right on here. Okay, put a little more on there. Don't be, I'll just throw it up there. I don't get too excited. Now, if you don't have any lure, and another good thing to do, as you can see, this was a big beaver, big old female. Let's see if I got, if she's got any left. Yep, she's got some caster left in her. I just milk her, milk out some of that caster. That's as pure as you're gonna get. I'll clean it up a little bit. Big beaver. Keep going. Here we are on the other side of the dam. There's a crossover right over there. I'm going to have them show you. Right there is one of the, the crossover that the main one. They got another one way on the other end, but that's mainly where they're crossing over right there. And then if I wanted to make a set over there, it'd be a good place for a set. But every otter generally is going to cross right there, and otter season's closed. So I'm five feet off to the side of it, and I'll still pull the beavers. All right, let's get started. What we've got here is we'll put this. We want to shine that up. Almost like a smear set. Okay, we're going to set these traps out in front of it, just like the caster mount. Okay, got a couple of beds in here. I've already got them staked out in deep water. Put that right back here. Get that bedded again. Good and solid. Take our other trap. Put this 
coming up a little closer. Center of that. Careful. Center of that. Center. Off. Oh, just a touch. Now. I can take some sticks and put it off to the side. You don't gotta get too aggressive a lot of times on your fence and sometimes you can get too aggressive on it and it'll actually spook them. Now, the thing that I do, and I kind of come across this by accident, is this is nothing but a one by two furring strip that I use on my icer system for snare and bee run of the ice, so that's another set all together. But, look how nice that looks. It sticks out like a neon sign. Okay, what I'm going to do with that. Put it up here. Hopefully that ain't too loud on your mic. Put that in. Now, the lure I'm using now is Dobbins Beaver Plus. It's a curiosity lure. Anybody that's heard me at my seminars knows I love curiosity lure. It's not a fight or flight lure. I take that and I put it right up on top here. Okay, smear her up. Put some up there. And I put some way back here. I put some grass over it. Okay, now, two reasons, now I'm going to back off and show you how that sticks out, but there's another reason I put that lure up on top. If for some reason I miss that beaver, I'll usually, if I miss him, I'll have him by the back foot in this one, because he's standing on his back feet smelling the top of that. And he's stepping around smelling that. And it just the more I get him to work that set, the odds are in my favor. Okay? Simple, fast, and you go. I'm backed out away from the dam now. You see how that stick sticks out? I mean you can see that thing stick right out. It's like a neon sign. Cross over to the left of it. All of these products you've been seeing are on my website, florentrapping.com. And uh, we carry all of the stuff that you need. And if you have any questions, feel free to call, email me. I answer them as fast as I can. And uh, I'll take care of you the best I can. Talk to you later. <laughs>